Hi guys, this is another video by DocLink Does Math. The content in this video is geared towards 6th grade math standards. These videos are public so that my students may access this information easily, as well as anyone else looking for math help. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do not, I hope you can find what you are looking for elsewhere. There's a lot of information out there. Be aware that I am not perfect, so there may be the occasional mistake. I apologize in advance if this should happen. So, today, we're going over lesson 4.3, Real World Problems, all about ratios. So, we're just going to jump right in. So our first example says, Megan prepares a fruit punch using apple juice and orange juice in the ratio of 4 to 3. If the total volume of fruit punch is 630 milliliters, find the volume of apple juice Megan uses. So we're first going to take note of the ratio. Apple juice and orange juice ratio of 4 to 3. So apple juice first, orange juice second, ratio of 4 to 3. So what would I do with this information? One method would be to draw a bar model. So it says apple juice to orange juice, four to three. So apple juice, you would draw four units. Orange juice, three units. That's what you call these little squares, units. And since the problem says the total volume of fruit punch is 630 milliliters, notice we have a bracket around all of the units showing that it's 630 milliliters. And notice, we want to know the volume of apple juice. So we have brackets with a question mark on apple juice, just those four units. So if we want to know the volume of apple juice, I need to know what each of these units are worth. Because if I knew one, I could just multiply by four, and I would have the total volume of apple juice, right? So my first step is going to be to find a unit rate. So I'm going to look at the only number I'm given, 630 milliliters. 630 milliliters. And I'm going to ask myself, what is that equal to? Well, 630 milliliters is the volume of the whole fruit punch, everything. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units. So 630 milliliters is equal to seven units. What do I want to know? I want to know what one unit is worth. That's what you always want to know. You want to know what one is worth, because if I know what one is worth, I can multiply by however many I need to get my answer. Okay, so if I want to know how many milliliters one unit is worth, I could go left or I could go down. I'm going to go down because it's pretty easy to go from 7 to 1 using multiply or divide only. So 7 divided by 7 is 1. What you do to one side, do to the other. So 630 divide by 7 is, well, 63 divided by 7 is 9. Add that 0, and you get 90. So 630 divided by 7 is 90 milliliters. Now, what did we just figure out there? Well, we just figured out what one unit is equal to. That means we know that each unit, or each little box, is worth 90 milliliters of juice. Now I can find out whatever I want to know. So what do I want to know? Well, my second step is I'm going to jump right towards getting the answer. It says find the volume of apple juice. <coughs> so apple juice. I notice that there's one, two, three, four units, and each are worth 90 milliliters. So 90 times four units. 9 times 4 is 36, add that 0, and I get 360 milliliters. And that's apple juice, and that's what I want, so we're going to write ourselves an answer. How much apple juice does Megan use? She uses 360 milliliters of apple juice. Now, if I wanted to know orange juice, because I found that unit rate and found all of the units were 90, I could do 3 times 90 and get that information as well. I could also take 630, which is a total, subtract 360 and get orange juice. So once you know that unit rate, there's so many ways you can find the other information that you may or may not want to know. But it's math. You want to know everything, right? Okay. 
our next problem. Same storyline, but different scenario. If Megan uses 520 milliliters of apple juice to make the fruit punch, find the volume of orange juice she uses. So different problem, so we can't just use this information. I'm sorry, so sad, right? Okay, so <coughs> we are using the same ratio. So our ratio was apple juice and orange juice in the ratio of four to three. So notice no bars were already drawn for me. So we're gonna do it from scratch. So apple juice, four units, orange juice, three, And it says Megan uses 520 milliliters of apple juice. So here's my apple juice. I'm going to put a bracket on it and say that is 520 milliliters. We want the volume of the orange juice. So I want to know what those three units are worth. All right, let's get started. First step. If I want to know what all three of these are, I'm going to first need to know what one is. So what number do they give us? 520 milliliters. I'm going to ask myself, what is that equal to? Well, 520 milliliters is apple juice. That would be one, two, three, four units that make up apple juice. So 520 milliliters equals four units. We always want to know what one unit is worth. All right, so which direction can I go in? <coughs> the box is on the left or on the bottom. Well, four to 520 is not that easy. However, going down four to one is pretty darn easy. Four divided by four is one. So what you do to one side, do to the other. So 520 divided by four, I'm not gonna do that in my head. So let's show some work. 520 divided by four, Four goes into five once. Four times one is four. Subtract and get one. Bring down two. Four goes into 12 three times. Four times three is 12. Subtract and get zero. Not finished. I have another number to bring down. Four goes into zero zero times. I have to write that zero. Four times zero is zero. Subtract and get another zero. Well, that was easy, right? Okay, so 520 divided by four is 130 milliliters. All right, so what information did we just find? We just found out what one unit is worth. We just found out that each unit is worth 130 milliliters of juice. All right, so what's my second step? Well, let's remind ourselves, what's our goal? Find the volume of orange juice. I see three units for orange juice. So 130 times three units. Let's see, 13 times three, 13, 26, 39. Add that zero. That means 390, so 130 to 60, 390 milliliters. That's orange juice, and that is what I want. Find the volume of orange juice. So we're going to finish by saying she uses 390 milliliters of orange juice. All right, let's continue. Our next problem says, <coughs> Ginny prepares a ceramic glaze mixture of feldspar, red iron oxide, and silica in the ratio of five to two to three. Ooh, it's a triple ratio, those are fun. The mass of the mixture is one kilogram, 200 grams. Find the mass of each ingredient used to prepare the mixture. So, triple ratio. It's got feldspar, red iron oxide, and silica, five to two to three. So feldspar, five, red iron oxide, two, silica, three. That's all that 
is different. You have three things instead of two things. All right, before we get started, our labels or measurements don't match. That's a problem. So we're going to need to combine them to make this number easily dealt with. So always change the larger unit to match the smaller one. So kilograms is larger. So we're going to change one kilogram to grams. So to do that, to go from kilograms to grams, we'd move our decimal one, two, three times to the right. So that becomes 1,000 grams. We're going to add the 200 grams to it. So one kilogram, 200 grams, becomes 1,200 grams. It's kind of a coincidence that it works out so nicely and looks like that. No, you can't just normally put them together. It just worked out like that. Okay. All right. Now, where are we going to get started? If we want to know the mass of each mixture, I need to know what each unit is worth. So I need to set up a unit rate. So what number have they given us? 1,200 grams. What is 1,200 grams equal to? Well, that's the whole mixture. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 units. What do we want to know? We always want to know one unit. How many grams make up one unit? All right, I could go left or I could go down. Let's go down. How do I go from 10 to 1? Multiplying or dividing? Well, 10 divided by 10 is 1. So let's do that to the other side. 1,200 divided by 10. Let's see, 120 divided by 10 is 12. Add that 0. So that's going to be 120 grams is one unit. <coughs> so we just found out that each unit is worth 1 120 grams. So that's 120, that's 120, every unit is 120. All right, what are we going to do now? We're going to come up with each of our individual answers. So first, Actually, I don't really like those numbers. I am going to change them. Technically, this was my first step. This was my second step. And this is my third. All right, now, it's a lot better. Okay, so I'm going to go through each of the ingredients and basically add them up. So our first one is feldspar. There's one, two, three, four, five units times 120. 12 times 5 is 60 out of 0. That's 600 grams. Next, red iron oxide. There's one, two units times 120 each. See, once we know one unit, we can find however many more we need. That's why we find one first. All right, 2 times 120 is 240 grams. <coughs> and third, silica. There are 1, 2, 3 units times 120 each. 120, 240, 360, 360 grams. You'll notice that 600 7, 8, 9, 10, 1100, plus 40 and 60, that makes 1200 grams. So you'll notice that all add up to 1200 grams as it should, right? Okay, let's go ahead and write our answer. The mass of feldspar. is 600 grams red iron oxide is 240 grams and silica 
is 360 grams. And there are the masses of each of the three ingredients. Again, first step, if your labels don't match, you're going to need to do that. Second step, primary thing to do, always find out your unit rate and then use that unit rate to find out however much of something you need. All right, next example. The ratio of number of CDs Brad has to the number of CDs Keith has is two to three. The ratio of number of CDs Keith has to the number of CDs Simone, oh, there's a third person, has is six to 11. Brad has 24 CDs. How many CDs do Keith and Simone have all together? Okay, <coughs> we're gonna do this two different ways. I'm gonna show you the long way, and you're like, why can't you just show me the fast way first? Sorry, not going to. So, I'm gonna show you two methods. I'm gonna show you the long way, and then I'm gonna show you short way. So, method one. You'll notice that it had two different ratios and it introduced a different person. <coughs> so it had Brad and Keith, two to three. Then it had Keith to Simone, six to 11. So we're basically going to take these three people and kind of meld them together into one big ratio. And we're gonna use bars like before and after. Okay, so let's get started. First, Brad to Keith is two to three. So Brad to Keith, two to three. Second, it says we have Keith to Simone. And that is six to 11. You'll notice Keith is on there twice. But one time Keith is three, and the second time Keith is six. That is our issue right there. So we're going to do a before and after. So before. So this is basically our first step. We have Brad and Keith. Brad is two, so we're going to draw two units. Keith is three, so we're going to draw three units. And then we're going to try to switch it over and introduce Simone now. So our first step is going to be copy the bars. So we have Brad and Keith. Brad is two units. Keith is three units. Next, we need to introduce Simone. We cannot draw 11 units yet, and here's why. Notice, this is Keith to Simone, 6 to 11. Keith only has three right now. So, we need to recut Keith into the LCM of three and six, which is six. So the LCM of three and six is six. So we're gonna recut Keith into six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, golden rule of mouth, what you do to one thing, you do to the other. So I'm gonna make a note of that. <coughs> what you did to Keith, do to Brad. What you did to Keith, do to Brad. So we cut each of those in half. We're gonna do the same to there. So now Brad has four units. Okay, so Brad is four, Keith is six, now let's put in Simone with 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. 
pretty sure that's 11. Yes. <clears throat> All right. So basically, these are our bars, and we're finally finished with that part. That's just step one, basically. So first step, we've got before. Second step, we've got our after. Gonna make a note of that before and after. Okay, now what do I do? Let's go back to our problem. It says Brad has 24 CDs. So let's make a note of that. Brad has 24 CDs. We're gonna use that to make our unit rate. So that's our next step. Let's do it right over here. So 24 CDs equals one, two, three, four units. 24 CDs equals four units. We want to know what one unit is. All right, so let's go down. How do I go from four to one, multiplying or dividing? Divide by four. Four divided by four is one. So do it to the other side. 24 divided by four is six CDs. So each unit is worth six CDs. So every unit is six. Okay, now let's see if that's enough information to figure out what we need. What do we need to know? How many CDs do Keith and Simone have all together? Well, now that I know what each unit is worth, I can literally just add them up. So, fourth step. Keith has one, two, three, four, five, six units times six each. That would be 36 CDs. Next, Simone has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I didn't need to count them because I do have that number right there. But anyways, 11 times 6, that would be 66. We're going to add those up. 60, 70, 80, 90, 96 plus 6 is 102. So it wants to know how many CDs they have all together. Keith and Simone all together have 102 CDs. So that's going to be our answer. Keith and Simone have 102 CDs. And we're finished. And you're like, that was a lot of information to take in. If you think about it, it's really not a lot of work because I would draw these bars and basically I would just introduce Simone and recut them. So, and it's not like you're gonna be explaining everything. So I know it looks like a lot, but it's not. However, there is a shortcut to start with this ratio and jump to this ratio right away. <coughs> so that's what we're gonna do. Method two. I hope you appreciate this method. All right, method two. So first, write down your ratios. Brad to Keith is 2 to 3. Then Keith to Simone, she's got to come in and ruin everything, and that would be 6 to 11. So when we introduced her, it changed our ratios. Now we need to make these match. So Keith doesn't match. Like he, He's got like a split personality here. Nope, can't happen. So what are we going to do? First step. Find the LCM of 3 and 6. So the LCM of 3 and 6 is 6. Because if I counted by 3s and counted by 6, 6 is the first number I come to. You know, like 3, 6, 6. Okay, so what are we going to do with that information? We're going to ask, how do I go from 6 to 6? Well, basically multiply by 1. So what you do to one thing, do to you the other. So we're only focusing on one ratio at a time. 
So 6 times 1 is 6. 11 times 1 is 11. So absolutely no change. Now let's do that on the other side. <coughs> so I would say, how do I go from 3 to 6? Well, I multiply by 2, right? So do that to this part of the ratio. Multiply by 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So basically, we have Brad is 4, Keith is 6, Simone is 11. So we found the LCM. That told us what Keith needed to be. Then I focused on one side of the ratio at a time. 6 times 1 is 6, so 11 times 1 is 11. No change. Then I switched to the other one. 3 times 2 is 6, so 2 times 2 is 4. That number increased. So now our new ratio is Brad to Keith to Simone, 4 to 6 to 11. Notice that's what we have here, 4 to 6 to 11. So essentially, this right here is a shortcut to get you right here immediately. Okay, <coughs> so what would I do once I have this information? Well, I would draw my bars, Brad, Keith, Simone, 4 to 6 to 11, and my bars are very sloppy. Sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then what would I do from here? I would basically proceed to step 3 above. So I'm not going to rework all of this out because we've already done it. So we did the shortcut. We found our new ratio, 4 to 6 to 11, Brad to Keith to Simone. We would draw our bars, and then we'd go to step 3 above. We would do our unit rate. We would say 24 CDs for Brad is equal to 4 units. Find one, get 6 unit, uh, CDs for each unit. And then ultimately, same answer. The only difference is you didn't draw before and after bars. Okay, one more problem. I'm going to use this shortcut again because this can be quite handy. Okay, our last example. Mrs. Galleon has three kids, Jax, Jace, and Joe. She doesn't talk about Joe much. The ratio of Jax's weight to Jace's weight is four to three. The race, uh, sorry, the ratio of Jace's weight to Joe's weight, she doesn't talk about Joe much, is five to six. What is the ratio of Jax's weight to Joe's weight? She doesn't talk about Joe much. Okay, so first step, we're going to write out our ratios like here. Brad to Keith, Keith to Simone. But instead, we have her kids, and it's Jax to Jace is 4 to 3. And then we have Jace to Joe, who she doesn't talk about much, is 5 to 6. And notice, Jace has, you know, that split personality going on. He can't be both 3 and 5. So what are we going to do? We're going to find the LCM, just like we did above. The LCM of 3 and 5. Let's see. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 5, 10, 15, 15 is our LCM. So. That means I need to change Jace to 15. Notice both numbers change, unlike our example before, where it had to change to 6, but one side was already there. Okay, <coughs> so let's focus on one side at a time. So how do I go from 5 to 15, our new number for Jace? Well, 5 times 3 is 15. So let's do that to Joe, who she doesn't talk about much. 6 times 3 is 18. So this side of the ratio is going to be 15 to 18. Now, let's do that on the other side. How do I go from 3 to 15? I would multiply by 5. 
So do that to the 4. 4 times 4. Oh, wait, no. I done messed up. Yeah, let's do that again. How do I go from 3 to 15 times 5? What you do to one thing, you do to the other. You don't do random things like that. All right, 4 times 5. See, it's got a badge. All right, 4 times 5 is 20. Okay, that's better. Almost messed up there. So again, the right side, 5 times 3 is 15, so 6 times 3 is 18. Left side, 3 times 5 is 15, so 4 times 5 is 20. Now I have our new numbers. Jax is 20, Jace is 15, Joe, who she doesn't speak of much, is 18. <clears throat> so our ratio of Jax to Jace to Joe, who she doesn't speak of much, is 20 to 15 to 18. All right, now, do I need to draw bars and all that? Well, let's look at the question. What's the ratio of Jax's weight to Joe's weight? Here she doesn't speak of much. Oh, okay, well, Jax, do that she doesn't speak of, is 20 to 18. However, 20 and 18 have common factors. You know what this means? This ratio is not simplified ratios, just like fractions, must always be simplified. Always and forever. That's never going to change. So, what will go into 20 and 18? 2. So, 20 divided by 2 is 10. 18 divided by 2 is 9. <coughs> so, all our question once is a simple ratio. And that's our ratio right there. So we're going to say the ratio of Jax's weight to Joe, who she doesn't speak of much, is 10 to 9. And we are finished. <clears throat> I hope this has helped with finding ratios with word problems. If it hasn't, there's a lot of information out there. I hope you find what you're looking for. Y'all have a great day.